What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei back with a new What If series. Reborn as Tetsuya Shiba in DXD. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. In the place where everything is covered in darkness there is a small ball of light floating around there. I don't know for how long has it been since I am here. I do know that I was in high school student, and all the THINGS mostly in I am in manga, that I have witnessed I remember all that very well just the last few minutes before coming to this dark place are all blur. Thought the ball of light. A few more weeks or so later the ball of light or more accurately the soul of the boy, was getting rather impatient or frustrated from all that waiting, because he had started to get bored there. During all the time he had reviewed all the anime and manga he had ever watched or read through his memories, and now he had nothing left to do. Just a few minutes after he had started thinking what to do something like a portal of light appeared in front of him. Out of the portal a humanoid figure wearing a black coat and pants came out of it, but his face just appeared as a blur to him. The humanoid figure first looked around, and then looked towards the soul and said, Sorry for the delay, I was rather busy in my work that I forgot about you, he said in a very casual tone. Hearing him the soul of the man got irritated but controlled himself and asked, Okay, first who are you, and what place is this and what am I doing here? Hearing his question the humanoid figure looked towards him and said, H-O-O rather a calm one A. For the answer to your questions I am a high level being who is supposed to manage the rebirth cycle of this dimension, and this place in your terms you can call it as void, and why you are here, should now be obvious to you as you are dead. The soul took some time to digest the information and then sighed and asked, so what will happen to me now? Hearing his response the humanoid figure chuckled and said, not sad or confused after hearing about your death. The soul calmly said, well what's done is done it cannot be reversed, and it's not like that I had any family or friends who would miss me even if I die. Hearing him the humanoid figure also sighed and said, normally a soul that dies had to be sent to either heaven or hell, depending upon their actions or being sent back to their world in a new body without their memories to start a new life. The soul was about to ask something. But the humanoid figure stopped him and said, But since I was very late and made you wait in the void for so long, I can give you an opportunity to live a life in a world you like with some wishes of course, so what do you say? Hearing his offer the soul became slightly excited and asked, It can be any world right even in I'm in manga world. Yes it can be any world, but you cannot travel to another world only one world, so choose carefully. The soul thought for a while, but suddenly he thought of something and asked, how many wishes do I get? The humanoid figure said, you will get five wishes out of which one will be about changing your appearance, and one would be any one person's powers with some optimization. The soul began thinking again and after an hour or so said, for the world I would like to go to the world of high school DXD I'm okay it's done. Now tell me about your wishes. Okay for the wishes I would like to have. 1. Super Growth 2. Skill Creation 3. Immortality 4. Powers of Psyche Kusuo from the Anime, The Disastrous Life of Psyche Kusuo 5. Appearance of Tetsuya Shiba from the Anime, The Irregular at Magic High School, the humanoid figure thought for a while and said, okay that's possible, but the immortality thing will be like you would be alive like other supernatural beings, that means you could be killed, and in return, you could make the lifespan of your trusted normal humans just like yourself, by giving them your blood, but it would. Not work if either one of you does not acknowledge each other, or rather trust each other, and no, your blood cannot be used to save life in dire situations, or for treating injuries, the soul was silent for a while digesting the information given to him, and then with a sigh he said. Okay and also can you make me an orphan as I don't want my parents to get involved in the supernatural world, and make me of the same age of Issei Hayuadu. Okay all of the things are done and as a bonus I would give you a house and Kuo and money able to last for about 10 years or so, you will reincarnate as 4 year old, and also don't tell anything about me or your past life to anyone, even those who you trust, and I have put a seal on your brain, so that no one would be able to read your brain, and of course, the people would not be able to notice the 
seal. Now bye. Bye and thanks a lot for this chance. As soon as he said that he was sucked into a portal and the soul lost his consciousness. In a room a small boy with black hair was lying down on the bed, the boy's appearance may be regarded as cute and lean. After a while the boy opened his eyes and checked his surroundings. He suddenly got some information or rather memories in his head. He clutched his head and gritted his teeth from pain. After a while he got up breathing heavily and was sweating as well. He stood up from the bed and started walking towards the bathroom. While walking he said, so my name is Tetsuya Shiba as well, and I live in Kuo town, my parents died two months ago during a car accident, and my relatives left me alone in this house, as they did not want to take me in. When he reached the bathroom he firstly took a bath and then checked his body. After changing his clothes he went to the living room and started to think what he will do in future, and made a training regime for himself. Suddenly he thought that he had no way of checking his physical condition and power, so he used he thought of using his magic creation, to create an appraisal ability. Suddenly a jolt of current passed through his body. He thought in his mind and said, status and suddenly a small holographic display came in front of him. Name. Tetsuya Shiba. Age. 4. Race. High human HP. 1000 AG. Human adult around 500 MP 1000 AG. Human adult around 100 CP. 1000 AG. Human adult around 100 STR. 50 AG. Human adult around 20 to 25 AG. 50 AG. Human adult around 15 and 42 AG. Human adult around 30 int. 50 AG. Human adult around 20 to 25 WIS. 28 AG. Human adult around 30 to 35 LUCK. 100 SKILLS. Magic creation. Super growth. Appraisal. Powers of Psyche Kusuo seeing his status one thing was clear to him the sad truth about his powers he still have to study, while he was still depressed he thought for a while, but didn't understood some of the things. Firstly, why was his race high human instead of just human and what was CP in his status, but shrugged it off. He knew why his stats were that high it was because of the continuous growth that Fichik powers caused to the body Sano, the only things left to do are to make skills to control and hide my powers, along with other useful skills. Time skip. After hours of thinking Tetsuya made some new magic and skills. 1. Deception to hide his energy signature 2. Protection film to not use his petrification and psychometry by mistake. 3. Psychic control to control his psychic powers. 4. Elemental magic 5. Space-time magic 6. Close combat 7. Creation magic 8. Barrier magic 9. Light magic 10. Dark magic 11. Healing magic 12. Detection 13. Photographic memory he nodded and felt proudly at his work, and then went to the kitchen to prepare lunch for himself, and after eating, he went to his room to rest for a while. When he reached his room he found an envelope on his desk. He picked up the envelope and opened it and found a card and a letter. He opened the letter and it read. Yo Tetsuya, your friendly wish giver here. I hope you reach there without any problems anyway here is the card it contains around 15 million yen, I guess that should be enough for the time being, and also for practice combat you can go in your astral form and fight many creatures there, and you might even find one or two surprises there. Anyway that's all for now. Bye. P.S. Don't forget to keep my existence a secret. After reading the letter Tetsuya used his space-time magic to create a dimension pocket and put both the letter and the card in it. After thinking for a while Tetsuya decided to check the layout of the city before going to bed. He changed his clothes and also put some of his clothes in his storage and went out of the house. Time skip. After checking most of the streets near him and buying some groceries along with a phone, he returned back to his home and took out some of the groceries from it and put it all on the table before arranging it. After he was done arranging he looked at the clock and thought that there was still some time left before dinner, so he started playing with his powers, and because of his super growth skill, his powers evolved extremely fast. While he was enjoying floating around the house, he heard his doorbell and got startled and fell down on his butt. He went towards the door without looking slightest bit startled, as his body was already very tough that the fall didn't cause him any pain, and he had already checked who was on the door through his detection and x-ray vision. When he opened the door he found three people standing in front of him, one man in his late twenties, one woman around the same age as the man and a small girl who was around his age. 
The significant thing was that Tetsuya knew who the girl was. The girl had light brown hair and had slightly violet eyes and looked like a tomboy. Tetsuya remembered seeing her in the anime she was in Deet Arena Shidu. Tetsuya looked at the man and asked, how may I help you? The man looked at Tetsuya and smiled and said, good evening, my name is Tauji Shidu, and me and my family shifted here this afternoon, so I thought of introducing ourselves to the neighbors. Seeing her father introducing himself Irina also raised her hand and said, Nice to meet you my name is Irina Shidu Tetsaya nodded and said, Nice to meet you as well my name is Tetsaya Shiba I hope we can get along. Tetsaya bowed a little while introducing himself. He looked towards the only person who didn't introduce herself. As if getting what he was asking the lady bowed a little and said, Nice to meet you my name is Grace Shidu I am Irina's mother. Tetsuya welcomed them inside his house and made them sit in the living room. He went to the kitchen and brought iced tea and some snacks for them. When he came back Tauji looked towards him and asked, Tetsuya Khan where are your parents I want to meet them as well. Tetsuya placed the glasses and the snacks on the table and sat back on the sofa silently and looked towards him and said, they are no more I live alone. Suddenly the environment in the room got heavy and Tauji felt guilty for asking him about his parents. Tauji looked at him and said, I am sorry. Tetsuya waved his hands saying that it's alright. Grace looked at him with pity and asked, what about your other relatives where are they? Tetsuya looked at her and said, there is some problems in the family, that's why I cannot live with them. Hearing him she stopped asking questions. The atmosphere started to get more tensed, but it was broken by the sound of a growl from Marina's stomach. Everyone looked at her who was clutching her stomach and was blushing because of embarrassment. Seeing her like that everyone started chuckling. Tauji got up from his seat and asked, Why don't you have dinner with us Tetsaya Khan Grace's cooking is very delicious. Irina also overcame her embarrassment and said, Yeah mom's cooking is very good you should join us. She grasped Tetsaya's hands and looked at her with an expression which said, You are joining no matter what seeing her expression, Tetsaya gave a defeated sigh and agreed with them. Seeing him like that both Tauji and his wife smiled at their children and went to their home for dinner. Time skip. 1MONTH After that day the Shidu family often called Tetsaya for dinner and for outings even Tetsaya, sometimes called the Shidas at his home for dinner, and they were surprised that a boy the same age as their daughter could take care of himself so well as his house was well maintained, and his cooking was delicious as well. The Tetsaya it seemed that the Shidas had asked in the neighborhood about him, and they found out how his relatives refused to take him in after his parents' death. They were angry at his relatives and often tried to adopt him as well, but he kindly refused to them, saying that he was fine with living like this. Both Irina and Tetsaya had joined the same school, and Irina was the one to force him in joining the same school, as she did not want to be in a school full of strangers. Irina often played with him or went out with him for sightseeing the town as he was her only friend, and she didn't had any problem with it, as she was never bored when he was around her. During this time Tetsaya has also started training in his astral form, and he had only one thought about that type of training, it's damn easy, it turned out that Psyche's powers along with his magic and super growth, were too much for fighting those monsters. Though sometimes some strong monsters might appear, they too get defeated easily just they take slightly more time. And that slightly more time here means 5 to 10 seconds. Tetsaya has also created some more skills using his skill create and some weapons, using creation magic as well. Skills. 1. Full C-O-U-N-T-E-R magical and physical, 2. Ain card sword style 3, Tetsaya's guns blazing 4, might guys to jutsu 5, chakra manipulation 6, kai manipulation 7, super regeneration 8, super magic recovery 9, body strengthening 10, unlimited blades w-o-r-k chant still required, 11, negation magic 12, sunshine 13, parallel thinking 14, trace magic 15, limter 16, gravity manipulation 17, abnormal. Status resistance weapons. 1. Noble Phantasms 2. Sacred Treasures 3. Elucidator 4. Dark Repulsor 5. Silver Taurus Pistol 6. Imperial Arms Most of Tetsaya's skill kept on evolving, even if he performed it for a short while. Most of the skills from the Anime he got was because all the Anime and manga are stored in his brain, and he is able to remember them because of his photographic memory, and able to picture it clearly because of Psyche's skill photography making him gaining skills because of the super growth. 
Because of all the skill and his supernatural growth rate, he is already at the level where he can defeat the ultimate class beings of this world. He had to put limiters on his body so that he accidentally does not kill anyone. Right now Tetsuya is meditating in his room as it was the only thing in which he doesn't get bored, as its difficulty level never decreases, and he also feel calm and peaceful while he meditates. After he finished doing his meditation he went out for his morning workout. Even though his strength always increases he suppress it with putting limiters on his body, and then increasing the gravity on his body. He doesn't need to do it as his strength and other physical stats keeps on increasing, but it does not mean that it changes his body as well. He needs to work out to maintain his physique because he is a voracious eater and a foodie as well. He also likes to do it as it was something that he enjoyed doing in his past as well. After completing his workout he went inside his house took a bath and prepared breakfast for himself. After eating and doing all the chores of the house with his chick powers, he thought that he should go and buy groceries. After changing his clothes and checking all the things in the house he went out of the house. Just when he opened the door he faced Irina who when saw Tetsaya got excited and hugged him. Tetsaya who was still shocked about this unconsciously hugged her back. Seeing both of them like this Grace chuckled, but Tauji had a conflicted expression. He was happy about seeing his daughter like this, but was getting frustrated of Tetsaya taking his daughter away. Tauji fake coughed so as to get their attention. When Tetsaya heard Tauji coughing, he got back to reality and immediately separated himself from her. Irina who was still a child does not understood anything. He looked at them and asked, why are you all here this early in the morning, and how did Irina woke up early today? Hearing him both the parents chuckled, but Irina pouted and looked away with a HMPH, and puffed her cheeks. Tetsaya looked at her and poked her inflated cheeks much to the other's amusement. Irina who got irritated looked at him with anger and said, M.O.O. don't tease me this much, Tetsaya nodded and asked, so why are you here this early? Hearing his question Irina beamed with joy and said, since today is weekend the school will start from the next week we are going to the amusement park and came here to invite you. Hearing them Tetsaya who was about to go and buy groceries started thinking. Seeing that Tetsaya was not agreeing with her Irina used her final attack. She looked at Tetsaya and puppy eyes and asked, you will come with us, right? Seeing her make puppy eyes Tetsaya wanted to look away, but was still able to feel them, he looked at his only saviors her parents, who were chuckling on seeing him getting troubled by her. Tetsaya finally sighed in defeat and said, okay I will come with you, but while returning please stop by somewhere as I need to buy some groceries. While Tetsaya was saying this arena had already started dragging him to their car. After the trip to the amusement park the very next day Tetsaya and Irina went to buy the supplies they would require for the school, and here too Irina tried to make Tetsaya buy stuff which looked similar to hers, but this time Tauji took Tetsaya with him leaving Irina with Grace, much to Irina's disappointment. Tauji even apologized for Irina's behavior and clinginess, to which Tetsaya waved his hands to assure him that it was okay. After buying their supplies they went home as they were supposed to start school from Tomro, and though there was a slight change in the plans which Tetsaya didn't told Irina, as she would be shocked when she would hear about it, but it was only a small problem as her parents also knew about it. In the morning Irina and Tetsaya happily went to school along with her family, though the three of them were thinking what probably would be the reaction that Irina would show when she would hear about it. When they reached the main school building Irina took Tetsaya's hand and started to drag him while saying, let's go Tetsaya. Tetsaya only sighed and pulled her slightly making her stop. Irina had a confused look on her face, as Tetsaya had never stopped her whenever she pulled him. Tetsaya had a helpless expression on his face. He looked towards Tauji who was looking away from them. Seeing this Tetsaya had his veins popping out on his forehead, and then an idea popped in his head. He looked towards Irina and said, your dad wants to tell you something. Hearing him all of them had different expressions. Tetsaya who was smirking while looking at Tauji, Grace was trying hard to hold her laughter, Irina was looking at Tauji with a confused but cute expression on her face, and lastly Tauji whose lips were twitching, and was inwardly cursing Tetsaya. Tetsaya brought Irina towards her father and frees his hand from hers and said, bye, while walking in another direction which was different from the one Irina was leading him to. Irina looked at Tetsaya and then looked at Tauji who was trying to look away from her. Irina who was still staring at her father asked, what do you want to talk to me, and why is Tetsaya going in that direction? 
Hearing her question Taoji frowned but still built his confidence and said, You see Arena though both you and Tetsuya joined the same school, there were too many children in your building, that's why some of the students were shifted to the new building, and Tetsuya is one of those students. Irina first looked at the building in front of her and then the building next to hers. Though both the buildings were nearby it still caused quite a huge damage to Irina. Irina looked at Tauji for a while and then smiled and said, okay by seeing her reaction, both the parents were shocked and were looking at Irina weirdly. Irina started to move towards her school, but after taking a few steps she stopped. She turned and looked towards her parents with a smile on her face. She turned her body and started running toward Tetsuya's direction while shouting, I am going with him Tauji blinked for a while, and then started running towards her daughter while shouting, wait Irina reached the gate of Tetsuya's school, but her father had already caught her. She grabbed the school gate while her father pulled her while saying, Irina let go you will be late. The witch Irina replied, no you let go I am going with Tetsuya. Seeing both the father and daughter all the nearby public was wondering what was happening there. While this was going on both Grace and Tetsuya were pretending that they were not with them and hid within the crowd. Both of them looked at each other and nodded while shaking their hands. Tetsuya went to his class quietly without anyone noticing him, and Grace went back to the car silently. Seeing that no one was going to help her Irina reluctantly let go, and Tauji quickly picked her up so that she could not try again and took her to her class. After leaving behind the desperate father and daughter pair Tetsuya went to his class and took the most famous the protagonist seat as it was still empty. After taking his seat he looked out of the window and saw Irina and Tauji still trying to win over each other. He was a little surprised when he saw Irina gave up rather easily. Soon after that some more students started coming to the class. He looked at the seat beside him and saw a boy with blonde hair sitting there, and he looked like he was in the same situation as Tetsuya, that is he too didn't know anybody here. Just as he was about to introduce himself to the boy, the teacher came to the class. The teacher looked around the class and nodded on seeing that everybody was present. She introduced herself to them and then asked the students to do the same. When his turn came he stood up and said, Tetsuya Shiba and then sat down quietly. The teacher and the students gave him a second glance but left it at that. Tetsuya looked at the boy who was sitting beside him stood up to introduce himself, but Tetsuya was very surprised to meet one of the characters of the show so soon. The boy who stood up looked at the teacher with an excited smile and said, My name is Saji Genshiru I hope that we all can be friends and sat down. Tetsuya looked at him for a second, but then looked back at the teacher. After the introduction classes went on like normal. Tetsuya even though thought that it was easy for him still looked at the teacher and did not look out of the window or slept on the desk like any other protagonist. Now don't misunderstand he was still not listening to the teacher but was meditating with his eyes open. After the bell for the break rang Tetsuya looked at the boy sitting beside him and moved his hand forward and said, Nice to meet you I am Tetsuya Shiba. Saji looked towards him and smiled before shaking his hand and said, Nice to meet you as well I am Saji Genshiru. They both talked for a while, and Tetsuya confirmed his suspicion that Saji too didn't know anybody here. They both went outside and had lunch together. There were also some boys who approached them, and they too became friends with both of them, though the other boys along with Saji were slightly annoyed as many girls came to Tetsuya to talk to him and ask him to play with them. Tetsuya could only smile helplessly. While all this was happening Tetsuya didn't notice Darina who was secretly looking at him with a hateful gaze. After the lunch break was over all of them went back to the class, and again Tetsuya did the same thing. Though during the time they were asked to play dodgeball on the field, most of the boys thought of giving Tetsuya a lesson, as he got very popular among the girls, even though it was his first day at the school. Tetsuya who heard what they were thinking through his telepathy, decided to teach them to mess up with him. On the field the only thing that the game could be called was total annihilation. Tetsuya dodged EV ball aimed towards him, while ruthlessly hitting them back, though he controlled his strength to not give them serious injuries. After that game his popularity among the girls increased further and respect and fear among the boys also increased. When the school was over Saji and Tetsuya left the class together while talking to each other. After reaching the school gate Saji and Tetsuya went their separate ways. Tetsuya who spotted Arena went towards her. When he approached her he saw that she was talking with someone. To not disturb her he stood there silently while waiting for them to finish their talk. When they stopped talking he approached them and said, 
Hey Irina, how was your day? Irina who heard someone calling her, looked towards the direction of the voice, and once she found out that it was Tetsaya she HMPH and looked away while pouting. Tetsaya went towards Irina and poked her cheeks and said, I am sorry I didn't tell you about this as you were very excited for school, and would have been disappointed if you knew about this. Even though she heard him apologizing but was still looking away. Seeing her like that Tetsaya sighed and said, Okay I will cook anything for you for dinner today alright. Hearing this Irina immediately forgave him and hugged him excitedly. Tetsaya also hugged her back, but soon separated and asked, So how was your day, did you make any friends? Hearing his question Irina smiled and said, Yeah the school was good, though it would be better if you would have been here too, and yes I made friends as well. She looked towards a boy with brown hair and said, Meet my friend Issei. Issei who was standing there while listening to their conversation jolted in surprise and said, Hello nice to meet you I am Issei Hayuadu Shidu's friend. Tetsaya who heard his name was not that much surprised as he knew that Arena would meet Issei around this time, he was just a bit excited to meet THMC of the Anime in real life. He moved his hand forward and said, Tetsaya Shiba Arena's friend nice to meet you too. They stood there and talked for a while before going home as both Issei's and Arena's parents came. Both the families introduced themselves, and both Issei's mother and father were surprised when they saw how well-mannered Tetsaya was. They initially thought that Tetsaya was Irina's brother, but Irina immediately denied it. When she realized what she had done she got embarrassed and hid behind Tetsaya. Seeing her like that Issei's parents, Grace and Tetsaya were chuckling, Issei was confused, and Tauji again had a conflicted expression, as even though he was amused seeing her daughter like that, but was also thinking that her daughter was going away from her. After all that both the families said goodbye to each other and left though Grace dragged Tauji by the ear, much to the amusement of Irina and Tetsaya. After meeting both Saji and Issei a whole year has passed without much changes in Tetsaya's life. The major changes though the major change that took place was that Tetsaya is now able to handle Satan class beings easily and can go toe to toe with some lower super class beings. Issei and Saji hadn't met yet, as even though Tetsaya mostly hangs out with Saji Issei has already started spouting his love for breasts and his dream of being a harem king in future, because of which Tetsaya mostly tries to avoid him and because of that Saji as well didn't meet Issei. Though to Arena who doesn't understand what was the meaning of those things thought that Issei was very cool. Even though Tetsaya tried to make her understand that it was bad being near him, she made fun of him and said that he was just jealous of Issei, as many people knew of him because of his antics. Arena's parents too asked Tetsaya about the Issei and were very worried about their daughter. They asked Tetsaya to help her to which Tetsaya told them his experience about it. They could only sigh and hope that everything would be alright with their daughter. Tetsaya has also started to visit the church along with Ashidas, as Tauji wanted to bring him on church's side, as he was already very strong for his AGE only, the amount which he shows to them. He even told him the benefits of joining the church, but still Tetsaya declined. When Tauji had started to get rather desperate he was beaten to the pulp by grace to not disturb Tetsaya. Today like any other day Tetsaya woke up, ate his breakfast, went to school, hung out with Saji and returned home. These days Irina had started to ignore him, and now spent most of her time with Issei. When Tetsaya returned home in the evening he first took a bath, and then made his dinner and ate it. He was about to go to bed, but he felt a presence in the astral plane. He quickly went to his room light on his bed and turned into his astral projection. When he saw the astral plane he was quite shocked as many creatures in the plane appeared to be stronger than the ones he had seen before. He used appraisal just to be sure, and was surprised to see that was indeed the case. Even though he can still defeat these creatures with ease, he was still surprised to see that they had gotten stronger. Suddenly he felt a sudden spike in energy, and he immediately came out of his thoughts. He tried to find the magical signature of the source but was unable to. He started flying towards the energy source at his full speed, and after 10 minutes he reached the destination and was shocked to see the reason for the sudden energy spike. In front of him stood a very familiar orange-colored fox with nine tails. Seeing him he started to think that how it was possible as the being had said that he would not be able to travel to different world, and this world was indeed the DXD world, so how it was happening. But while he was thinking the fox had already seen him and was about to attack, but stopped when he saw that the human wasn't attacking. 
that Saya was still in deep thought, then suddenly he remembered, didn't that being said that there were a few surprises, as it one of them? Just as he thought about it a note came in his hands. Tetsaya read the note which said, yes it is. After he read the note his lips twitched, but he calmed himself down. As soon as he calmed himself the fox asked, hey human where am I? When Tetsaya heard the question he was about to answer, but suddenly he noticed something was different. He realized that the fox in front of him wasn't the one he knew. He wasn't Kurama from Naruto because the fox has a fucking girl's voice. Tetsaya was again shocked, and this time he was not able to calm himself. Seeing that the human in front of her was not answering the fox growled and started to release pressure. When Tetsaya noticed the pressure increasing he came out of his stupor and looked towards the fox and said, Ah sorry I was thinking something, what did you say? Seeing that the human in front of him wasn't the slightest bit affected by the pressure intrigued the fox, and she again said, Where am I and who are you? Tetsaya looked at the fox and said, We are in the astral plane, and for my identity, I am Tetsaya Shiba nice to meet you. Tetsaya did a slight bow and smiled at the fox. Seeing the human in front of him the fox was very amused and said, Likewise I am Kurumi a chakra tailed beast. After their introduction Kurumi and Tetsaya started interrogating. After a few hours of question and answers they both got their conclusions. The conclusion was. They both don't know what is happening, it was clear that Kurumi was not from this world, but from a world which was similar to Naruto the difference was that the world from which Kurumi came, was a gender bended world of Naruto, but in that world, the Aotsusuki clan had already destroyed them so in order to stop them all the tailed beasts, and in some powerful shinobis gave her their power to intercept their last attack. When their attacks collided a huge explosion took place, after which she found herself in the astral plane. Even though they don't understand it, but somehow the explosion opened a portal to this dimension, and she landed in that astral plane. After a moment of silence Tetsaya asked, so what would you do now because as of you are now you cannot leave the astral plane. After thinking for a while Kurumi looked at him as if appraising him, she nodded after a while and said, okay Tetsaya become my Jinchiriki, Tetsaya looked at her for a while, and the blinked and shouted, what? Kurumi looked at him with an amused expression and said, I cannot travel to the real world from this plane, but you can so by becoming my Jinchiriki I can leave as well, and besides Kurumi turned into a beautiful and voluptuous woman, and licked his cheek and said, the amount of power that you are emitting is making me hot. She had a seductive smile on her face which turned into a gentle smile before saying, and you don't harbor any ill intentions or negative feelings towards me, so I have no problem being with you for the rest of your life. Tetsaya looked at her for a while and then said, before you say anything else listen I am not a normal human, I belong to a race called High Human and is basically immortal, so do you still want to be with me? When she heard that he was immortal she was quite happy and latched onto him and said, then it is even better I can stay by your side always. Tetsaya who heard her answer sighed in defeat and said, okay so what I have to do. As soon as he asked this question Kurumi grabbed his face and gave him a deep and passionate kiss and said, thank you now I will be in your care, do treat me well, and she get absorbed in his body in form of an orange mist. Tetsaya came out of his stupor and said, that felt nice, maybe I will try it again sometime. When he said that a voice came in his mind and said, oh so you liked it huh, ask me whenever you want. She said in a sultry voice. Tetsaya nodded and collected all of the leak chakra before going back. After becoming Kurumi's Jinchiriki two months have passed, and during these past two months some things have changed for Tetsaya. Firstly Saji has changed schools as his father moved to another part of the town, so the school life has now become slightly more boring for Tetsaya, though he talks to Kurumi during the school, but still he felt slight lonely as Saji left the school, and Arena was rather busy with his say. But the biggest benefit he got after becoming a Jinchiriki, was that now he could use ninjutsu, Jinjutsu and Tijutsu, as he read Kurumi's mind, and found all the knowledge on hand signs and the mechanisms of those jutsus, he even created skills after gaining the knowledge that Kurumi possessed. Skills. 
1. Hand Sign Mastery 2. Gentle Fist Art 3. Duen Jutsu 4. Sharingan Yes He removed the curse on the eyes, and is able to ice all the Manjekyo abilities. 5. Byakugan Eyes 6. Rinnegan Eyes 7. Tensigan Eyes 8. 5 Elemental Release 9. Sage Mote gained from Kurumi, which got evolved 10. Keke Genkai. All. 11. Dust Release. Keke Tauda. 12. Tailed Beast Cloak 13. Tailed Beast Mode 14. Sage of 6 Path MOTE, both Indra and Ashura halves, 15, Gluttony when he got the power of the eyes, Kurumi got surprised and asked him how did he got them to which he simply said, looks like the powers of those Atsusuki clan, was also present in the astral plane, and got absorbed while absorbing your leftover chakra. Hearing his answer Kurumi thought that it was possible and left it at that. When Titsaya heard her question about the eyes he was startled, but when he saw her accepting his answer he sighed in relief. He also went to the astral plane every night and polished his moves and practiced his jutsus. Now he have no fear of any creature in this universe, as with his six-path power, he could easily annihilate any super-class being not to mention Tensigan, with which splitting the even earth in two parts is no big deal for him. Even if beings like Office or Great Red came after him he could simply use Kamui and go into his dimension. Just a few years more with his growth rate he would become a freaking Satama with some extra added benefits. Right now Tetsuya and Karumi are arguing. It was now time to cook dinner, but Tetsuya is out of groceries for now. Tetsuya said, what's the problem I can just eat cup noodles, why are you declining to that idea? No you are not eating cup noodles today, you are eating them for the past three days. Said Karumi. What's wrong with cup noodles it just get the work done. They continued to bicker with each other for a few minutes, Kurumi who was getting tired with bickering with Tetsuya, got an idea and said, okay if you don't go and buy groceries, then you will not be able to eat cough jelly, as you a teddy last one yesterday. Hearing this Tetsuya got shocked and hurriedly went to change his clothes. He doesn't know if this was because of taking Psyche's powers, but he have a sweet tooth and just like him he too like coffee jelly the most. After buying the groceries on his way home he was talking to Kurumi about various things when suddenly he felt a mana burst. He hurriedly kept his groceries in his dimensional pocket and ran towards the location. When he reached there he found a few people covered in ice, and a girl who was crouching while hold her head and crying and saying, stay away, leave me alone, I didn't do anything please someone save me. Hearing her voice a memory came back to me, and I immediately rushed towards her and hugged her and said, calm down it's alright I am here. Itsaya stroked her head while saying those words to her silently. As she recognized the voice she looked up to the person and said, Ani Sama Titsaya looked at her and gave a gentle smile and said, yes it's your Ani Sama Miyuki Miyuki started crying once again and hugged Titsaya back. Titsaya continued to console her while remembering about the memories he gained. When Titsaya first came to this world he tried to find about his other family members. He did find some of them, but one member of his family made him shocked. Titsaya's aunt who was the same person he had seen in the Anaim. He thought that other families of the Anaim might also be present in this world, and tried to find about them as well, but to his luck, there were no other families other than his. Though the only difference between his family and the one in the Anaim, was that he wasn't blood related to any of them as his father was adopted in that family. After Miyuki stopped crying Tetsaya looked at her and she looked back at him. They stared at each other for a while before Tetsaya broke the silence and asked, what are you doing here alone and what happened to you to be in this condition? On hearing his question Miyuki looked down for a bit and then started to explain the situation to him. While Miyuki was at her home, she received the news that her mother died in a plane crash, and just like Tetsaya's case, his family refused to accept her in their family, and was thus put in an orphanage. But the condition in the orphanage and the treatment she received there was very harsh. She was bullied, starved and made to do manual labor, and that too till she fainted on a daily basis. Not being able to bear that treatment she ran away from the orphanage. But while she was on the run she came across a man who thought of selling her. When fear got over her a wave of blue energy traveled from her body and froze the ones who were approaching her. Hearing her whole story to say Tetsaya was angry was an understatement. He was fuming with rage and was thinking of destroying both the orphanage and his family, but stopped thinking about that and looked towards Miyuki and patted her head and asked with a gentle smile on his face, Hey Miyuki if you don't have anywhere to go, why not stay with me? 
Miyuki who was enjoying her head being patted when heard his brother was very happy and tears of joy came out of her eyes, and she hugged Tetsuya and said a soft, yes, and drifted off to sleep. After Tetsuya took Miyuki back home he gave her the necessary first aid. While applying the antiseptic Tetsuya saw that Miyuki was waking up. When Miyuki woke up she found herself in an unfamiliar room. She began inspecting the room and finally her gaze stopped on Tetsuya. While Miyuki was asleep Tetsuya had already appraised her, and only thing to say was that Miyuki was not a normal human. Name. Miyuki Shiba. Age. 4 years. Race. Human HP. 200, MP. 200, CP. 50 STR. 8 Agi. 4 End. 10 Int. 30 Wis. 7 Luck. 58 Skills. Ice Magic. Wind magic Miyuki has high magic capacity, and also has wind and ice affinity, and if she will be living with Tetsuya, then he needs to seriously train her or she might suffer in the future. After noticing that Miyuki was looking at him Tetsuya asked, are you alright now? Miyuki just gave a nod and smiled. Tetsuya patted her head and said, okay it seems like you are fine for now. Tetsuya looked at her with a serious expression and said, Listen Miyuki you should not tell anything about the blue energy wave to anyone, if you are asked what happened just say that I saved you, I will tell you about that energy later okay. Miyuki also formed a serious expression on her face which just looked cute to Tetsuya and said, I will not tell about it to anyone in Ayasama. Tetsuya smiled and said, Now that this problem is solved I guess we should do something about your clothes. We will go buy you clothes tomorrow, and you have to be admitted in a school as well. For now come with me. Tetsuya helped Miyuki to stand up and took her to Shidu residence. He rang the doorbell and waited for a while. Soon the door opened and Grace came into their view. Seeing Grace Miyuki hid behind Tetsuya. Seeing the two children in front of them Grace looked at both of them curiously and asked, What happened Tetsuya-chan, and who is the girl behind you? Tetsuya greeted her and said, Grace and this girl here is my sister Miyuki. If it would not be a burden can she borrow some of Irina's clothes? Grace smiled at him and said, of course come in. Though Grace was a bit confused that Tetsuya had a sister, she still let them in as she knew that Tetsuya is a trustful person. When they entered the house Tetsuya looked towards Grace and asked, is Tauji san is at home? Grace nodded and said, he is in the living room. Tetsuya nodded and looked towards Miyuki and said, go together with Grace Anne and be a good girl, and don't trouble her too much. Miyuki smiled and said, hum I will be a good girl. Seeing the siblings Grace chuckled and took Miyuki from there and said, now I have a girly daughter it would be very fun to dress you up, but first you have to take a bath. Grace was very happy right now as she had a chance to have an experience with a girly girl, not a tomboy like her daughter. Seeing her like that Tetsuya smiled wryly at her and then entered the living room. In the living room Tauji was watching TV, but when he noticed that someone entered the room, he looked towards the door and found Tetsuya there. Tetsuya also looked at him and greeted him. Tetsuya took a seat in front of him and asked, Tauji-san, I want to ask a few favors from you. Tauji was very surprised as Tetsuya had never asked for their help, and since he was asking for help, he thought that the matter would be really serious. Tauji also looked towards Tetsuya with seriousness and asked, Sure what do you want my help with? Tetsuya nodded and said, There is an orphanage that I want you to check that whether it is under church's administration or not, and if it is can you please destroy it. Hearing his request Tauji frowned and said, You do know that you are asking a church official to destroy a property of the church right? Tetsuya nodded and told Tauji about the things that Miyuki have told him. Listening to Tetsuya Tauji was both angry and ashamed. Angry at the officials who were mistreating the children and ashamed at himself for not noticing such things. Tauji apologized to Tetsuya and said that he would look into this matter as soon as possible. While they were talking the door opened and Grace came in the room along with a shy Miyuki who was wearing a cute dress following behind her. Seeing her like that Tetsuya nodded and said, you look cute Miyuki and smiled at her. Listening to his compliment and seeing his smile Miyuki blushed and looked down seeing her like that everyone laughed. Tauji introduced himself to Miyuki and also apologized for the treatment she received in the orphanage. Suddenly Tetsuya looked at both the shyness and asked, Ah also Tauji-san can you do the paperwork to make Miyuki attend the same school as me? Tauji nodded, and they continued to talk to them for a while. Grace even asked Miyuki if she wanted to be adopted in their family. 
When Tetsuya heard this he had a frown on his face, but he immediately fixed his expression. But his expression was noticed by Miyuki who was happy that Tetsuya cared about her, and she declined Grace's offer. Soon the time for dinner approached and Arena also came to the house. Seeing Arena Miyuki was a bit wary of her, but still talked to her, while Tetsuya and Grace went to the kitchen to prepare the dinner. While they were eating Grace asked a question which made all of them choke on their food. Grace looked at the Shiba siblings and said, it would be very good to have a daughter like Miyukina. Tetsuya why don't you marry Arena in the future, and then Miyuki can live with us. But as soon as she asked the question the temperature of the room immediately dropped. Everyone looked towards Miyuki whose eyes were covered by her hair, and she was mumbling on Isama wife. Seeing her like that Tetsuya placed a hand on her shoulder and said, Miyuki Grace and is just joking. Feeling Tetsuya's hand on her shoulder Miyuki came back to reality and nodded and smiled at Tetsuya. She then looked at Arena and said, I don't know what is your relation with Ani-sama just be clear that I will be his wife. When she said that Tetsuya again choked on his food and started coughing. Meanwhile Arena and Miyuki kept on bickering to each other with Arena, kept on denying that she didn't like Tetsuya, and how Issei was better than him but still was feeling a bit conflicted from inside and Miyuki, explaining how Tetsuya was the best from her past experiences. Seeing both of them like that the rest of them only smiled and tried to calm them down. After the dispute between Miyuki and Arena was over Tetsuya and Miyuki came back home, and the very next day they went for buying the things that Miyuki required. For some reason Grace also went with them and was the most excited among the three of them. Seeing her enthusiasm the people who were around them kept on glancing them from time to time. After going home that day Miyuki was way too tired, so Tetsuya just explained to her about magic and all, and they decided to practice it daily. Tetsuya also told her made a mental link with Miyuki, so that they could talk to each other through telepathy. But what Tetsuya didn't took into consideration was that through his mental link, even Kurumi was able to talk to Miyuki, and therefore Tetsuya had to explain about their relationship. Miyuki and Kurumi argued for quite a while about the whole wife thing, and finally settled on sharing him. From that day onwards Miyuki started sticking to Tetsuya more and more. She would sleep with him and even took baths with him as well. Tetsuya had no problems with it as in his eyes Miyuki was still a child. Miyuki was also trained by Tetsuya from that day too. He would take her for morning workouts to make her body a bit stronger, make her feel magic as she was still not accustomed to it, train her in close combat for self-defense and much more. The only thing was that even though he himself does not have to train this much, he still was a training maniac, and Miyuki had already started to experience it. Though she was trained to the extreme she knew that Tetsuya was only doing it because he cared about him. Tetsuya too felt that it was important as even though he was not allowed to tell her what would happen in the future, he still knew that if Miyuki would not be prepared till that time might lead her to various life and death scenarios. Miyuki was also very talented, even though she did not have Tetsuya's monstrous growth rate she was still very talented. She absorbed everything that Tetsuya threw at her just like a sponge, and her conviction to make Tetsuya notice her more drove her even faster to reaching her goal. Because of this training speed, Tetsuya also decided to add sword training in her regime as well. Tetsuya too didn't stood still he himself started practicing all sorts of weapon and martial arts, he even started learning about various strategies about fighting from Kurumi or from books about various generals, which he could get from library or from Tauji. He also started to resume his studies so that he could gain as much knowledge as he could get, because he knew that in the future, it would be very difficult among the various events that would take place. Seeing her Tetsuya like that Miyuki's and Kurumi's admiration for Tetsuya grew even further. Now Miyuki and Kurumi had set aside their differences as they knew that they would be with Tetsuya in the future, and now tried to help each other as much as they can. Kurumi even started to teach Miyuki about chakra, but found that Miyuki could only use chakra to enforce her body, and could not use ninjutsu, jinjutsu or tajutsu. Though Miyuki was disheartened at first, but with the help of encouragement from both Kurumi and Tetsuya, she overcame it, and decided to excel in her own forts, and made her Ani-sama proud. Tetsuya also made a special training room like the hyperbolic time chamber with his space-time magic, and started to practice all the weapons and moves he had created from different animes, and hell firing your own Kamehameha, was his greatest moment of his life. It was just that it was everyone's dream from the childhood, and now he had accomplished it. 
During all this time Irina had also become conscious of Tetsuya, and now had complicated feelings within her. The argument that Miyuki had with her made her realize that she was not the only girl around Tetsuya. Though on the one hand she thought that Issei was cool, but she knew that Issei still thought that Irina was a boy on the other hand, she knew that Tetsuya had always helped her and treat her just like a girl she is. She wanted to realize her feelings by being around Tetsuya, but Miki would always come in her way and would prevent her from doing so. Seeing her like that her parents were a bit concerned for her, but could not do anything as she was the one who distanced herself from him and would have to solve it on her own. Just like all this one year passed away. Now Tetsuya and Irina were both six years old, and Miyuki was five years old. Tetsuya had decided to take Miyuki with her in the astral plane, as there are many weak monsters on which Miyuki can practice fighting and get experience. Tetsuya also started to spend some more time with Ashidas, as he knew that the next year they would be going back to England. Tetsuya had also told Miyuki about him being an immortal and a high human, and had promised her that he would make her a high human as well, when she would reach high class level. Thinking about the reward that would make her live with Tetsuya for a very long time the fire inside her rekindled, and her enthusiasm grew even further. He had also given her a ring that would hide her presence, and would also tell her position to him. She could also use the ring to send a sows in case of emergencies. The ring also had a huge storage inside it which worked just like his own storage, just that hers was limited. Right now he was out on buying some groceries and some things that Miyuki had asked for. When he was returning home he came in front of the park. He saw that Irina was there and thought of calling out to her, but stopped when he noticed that she was with Issei. He sighed and left them there. He had warned her many times, but she didn't care about his warnings. Right now it was raining heavily, and the Shiba siblings were having dinner peacefully. Miyuki would often find chances to feed her and Ayasama, and Tetsuya would wholeheartedly receive her affection, and would even return it by doing the same. Their blissful moment was broken when Tetsuya received a call on his phone. Miyuki was very annoyed, and Tetsuya patted her head to comfort her. Tetsuya sighed and looked at his phone, but he got confused as he received the call from Tauji and picked up the call. Hello, said Tetsuya. On hearing Tetsuya's voice Tauji asked him in seriousness, Tetsuya do you know where Arena is? She still had not came back home yet. Tetsuya found it odd that she still had not came back and said, no, I don't last time I saw her she was with Issei. On receiving the answer Tauji sighed and said, okay if you find anything about her do tell me. Tauji tried his best, but Tetsuya could still feel that Tauji was very panicked and worried about Arena. Tetsuya used his magic to find Arena and found that she was still in that park. Tetsuya told Miyuki about that and immediately went towards the park. When he reached the park he found Irina still sitting on the bench. He went towards her and covered her under an umbrella. When Irina felt that someone was in front of her she looked up and saw that it was Tetsuya. Tetsuya was about to say something, but Irina immediately hugged him and started crying. Tetsuya just stood there and didn't say anything and patted her back. After she calmed down a bit Tetsuya looked at her and asked, so wanna tell me what happened? Irina who heard him was a bit hesitant but still told him. Irina told Tetsuya that while they were playing in the park, Issei was still spouting his harem king nonsense. Irina whose feelings were getting complicated day by day, decided to ask Issei what did he felt about her. Issei who still thought that Irina was a boy told her that she was a very good friend and all. Irina who was a little dissatisfied with his answer, asked him that what would he date her if she was a girl to which Issei immediately denied saying that he didn't like boys, and even if she was a girl, she would not be to his liking. Hearing her Tetsuya was very angry at Issei and wanted to kill him, but calmed himself and consoled Irina who had again started crying. Tetsuya who saw that Irina was not stopping, removed her from her embrace and looked at her and said, Calm down, it's not like he was the only person in the world. It is his loss for losing such an awesome girl like you Irina. If he cannot accept you for who you are then he didn't deserve you anyway, don't be depressed because of him, and show him that you can be happy even if you are not with him. Irina who heard him stopped crying and nodded and looked down. Tetsuya who saw that she had calmed down, carried her on his back and took her home. Tauji and Grace thanked him and he went to his home. While he was in the bath along with Miyuki he noticed that Miyuki was not talking to him like usual, but shrugged it off as he was tired today and thought that he would ask her about it some other time. 
Unknown to him his whole confrontation with Irina was known to Miyuki, because while he was talking Kurumi had connected his telepathic link to hers. Hearing Irina's story Miyuki was very angry at the boy. She also thought that now Irina who had come to accept her feelings will come towards Tetsuya, and was thinking whether to accept her or not. She was discussing with Karumi about this matter, and they both came to the decision to give her a second chance. While both of them were discussing Tetsuya noticed that his link was connected to hers, and he too heard their discussion and said, You know I think I have to prohibit Karumi from connecting the link, as it is a matter of my privacy. When they heard it both Miyuki and Karumi who was insider looked down in shame and didn't utter any words. After that day Irina had tried to stick close to Tetsuya like she used to, but Miyuki would interrupt her most of the times, and the times when Miyuki wasn't around Tetsuya gave her a cold shoulder and treated her the same like when she was his friend. Irina tried her best to change his behavior, but it was all in vain. Tetsuya had also stared to remain expressionless most of the time, and only showed his emotions when he was around his family, Shidas or was eating coffee jelly. Tetsuya had also stated to draw some of the famous manga of his previous world, as his account was starting to get dried up, and knew that sooner or later he would have to start making money. Miyuki who saw his manga getting popular, wanted to brag about her and Ayasama to her friends, only to get stopped by Tetsuya, who told her that if others knew about him, they would start bothering them, and he would not be able to spend much time with her. Hearing his reason Miyuki frowned and apologized for the mistake she was about to commit, but was also happy to know that Tetsuya wanted to spend more time with her. Miyuki's training had also increased and is now harder than before. She was talented but was still not a high class level. Her determination had started to decrease, and this was noticed by Tetsuya. He was worried about Miyuki and was wondering about what to do to help her. While he was in a deep thought Karumi came to his aid and said that she knew of a way to help him. Tetsuya who thought that he would be able to help Miyuki, believed her and agreed to whatever she planned, but Tetsuya regretted his choice, and it was too late for him to step back. Though Miyuki was now motivated more than ever the thing that Tetsuya had to do when she reaches high class, was that he had to kiss Miyuki. Tetsuya cursed Karumi, but Miyuki always made him stop by making seductive noises in his mind. Tetsuya on hearing those noises would immediately blush and would start to avoid her by cutting their link. Her Tetsuya powers were not the only thing that grew at an enormous rate, his body too was maturing very fast, and even though he was between 6 to 7 years old, his outer appearance was like a child of around 9 or 10 years old, and he was on the way where people would start to call him handsome rather than cute. Tetsuya had also nearly completed his high school level studies and was now teaching Miyuki to also help her. In the school and other places many boys had tried to come close to Miyuki, but stopped when Tetsuya glared at them, but still some brave fellows thought of testing the waters and had met their demise by the hands of Tetsuya. Things were similar for the girls who tried to approach Tetsuya, but Miyuki didn't got violent with them and just gave the girls an ice-cold glare, which turned into a bright smile whenever Tetsuya looked at her. Time flew by like this and one year had passed, and the time for Irina to go back to England had come. Right now Irina was clinging to Tetsuya like a cola and was crying, while Miyuki kept on giving her a death glare, but she ignored it and kept on saying things like she didn't to go and all that. Right now Tetsuya and Miyuki were in Shidu residence, and Tetsuya was preparing food along with Grace for the last time. Though they all were sad but they knew that they had to go back. Irina tried to ask her parents to take both the Shibas with them, but her parents denied as the reason for which they were going, was to train Irina to become an exorcist, and knew it would be dangerous for the siblings. Irina who heard this was really disheartened and lowered her head in silence. The next day in front of Shida's house Tetsuya and Miyuki were there saying their goodbyes, but Irina was standing in the corner still looking down. Tetsuya who saw her like that went towards her and flicked her forehead with a bit of force. Irina who received the hit was hurt, and tears were forming at the corner of her eyes. Tetsuya looked at her and said, what are you being sad for, it's not like we will not meet in future you can always come back, and we will be here anyways. Tetsuya came closer to her and kissed her forehead where he flicked. Irina who was blushing hard from the kiss, doesn't notice that Tetsuya tied something along her neck. When she came out of her stupor she looked down and found a silver necklace with a pendant in the shape of angel wings, which had a violet gemstone in it, just like the color of her eyes. 
Irina was about to confess to him, but stopped when Tetsaya placed his finger on her lips and said, save it for the next time we meet. Irina was blushing but still nodded. Tetsaya went back towards Shidas who were looking at him, and Grace started to tease him. While this was happening Miyuki came towards her and looked at her directly in her eyes. Irina too looked at her eyes with seriousness. Both Tetsaya and the Shidas were looking at both of them curiously. Miyuki broke the silence and said, even though I don't like you much, but still you were my friend so I will miss you, but don't expect that I will let you have Ani-sama easily. Miyuki said the last part in a very cold voice, but Irina didn't flinch and said, don't worry I will claim him fair and square. They both glared at each other for a while, but dropped it off and started to smile. All of them thought that both of them would come to friendly terms now, but Miyuki said, well you would be away from Ani-sama till that time, I would be much ahead of you, so you will not stand a chance. Irina who heard this frowned, and both of them started to bicker with each other. Seeing both of them the other's side but still smiled as they thought that both of them had become closer. They all talked for a while, and later the Shidas left for their flight, after Irina went back to England Miyuki, and Tetsaya started their training once more at a faster pace than before. Miyuki giving her all for the kiss and Tetsaya doing his training first time with seriousness as he had encountered a very difficult situation. The thing was that Tetsaya knew all about what would happen in the future, but the problem he encountered was that he doesn't know when the hell those events will happen. He thought that there were some characters that he wanted to save, and decided that like most of the MCs in the different fanfics he read in that he would save them too, but he forgot that those MCs either had a system which gave them quest to save them or were alone, so that they would reach the location of the event as soon as possible, but he didn't had either. He does not have a system which would guide him, and certainly explaining Miyuki and Karumi about his actions was a no-go, as he was not allowed to disclose any information about the, the being who sent him in this world. He was in a dilemma and decided to leave it at that, and thought that he should prepare himself and Miyuki for the future, rather than worrying about those who he knew nothing about. He would think about it when he will come across such situation. Miyuki and Karumi who saw Tetsaya's serious face while training were mesmerized by him, and it only triggered Miyuki to work even harder than before. Tetsaya had started to teach Miyuki difficult forms of his aim card sword style, and Miyuki was for the first time suffering in her training bit, still the reward kept her encouraged to keep on practicing without feeling down. Miyuki had also started learning sensory, teleportation and flight magic, and also really enjoyed the flight training, as it was a new experience for her. Tetsaya had also discussed with Miyuki to form his own team, as having a some people in the group will be very beneficial in the future. He had also decided to buy the house that the Shidas left and converted into a small restaurant. Since Shidas had gone now and he was the one who cooks in the family his cooking skill had reached that level, yes his cooking had reached the Fujasm level. Karumi who usually stayed out of their training, had also started to help them train, though she cannot help Miyuki much, she still helped her improving her sensory and hiding capabilities, because of which now Miyuki can hide her presence without the ring. Through Tetsaya's harsh yet effective training both Tetsaya and Miyuki had improved a lot Tetsaya had now reached the level where he could hold toe to toe with the dragon gods, he even had some skills that could destroy both of them in an instant. As for Miyuki she had reached the high class level even faster than Tetsaya's expectation. When Tetsaya told her that she had reached high class level and was about to congratulate her further, but was stopped by Miyuki who suddenly rushed towards him and kissed him on the lips. Tetsaya who although was surprised didn't reject her and grabbed Miyuki's waist and Miyuki following Jis' example, wrapped her arms around his neck. The promise of her kiss was transformed into a make-out session between them, only to be interrupted by Karumi who freed Tetsaya from Miyuki and started her own make-out session, but she was a bit more aggressive than Miyuki. From that day onward both Miyuki and Karumi always tried to pin him down while he wasn't busy, but it was a bit difficult for them as Tetsaya who had now registered both of them as members of opposite sex, started to calm him down and wait for an appropriate age for the things to go a bit forward. Though he too showed them his affection from time to time by hugging them or giving them light pecks so that they don't feel sad. Like this two years have passed, and Tetsaya was now only focusing on training Miyuki and gathering information about the supernal activity taking place around his area. He would often spar with Miyuki who couldn't land a hit on him, and was very annoyed by that fact. 
While he was looking at some documents he received a message from the publisher in whose company he used to submit his manga. He read the message and looked towards Miyuki and Karumi who were lying on his lap while he was caressing their heads. He asked, hey I need to go to Kyoto for some reason of my manga. Do you want to come with me, there will be a festival there as well. We can visit the festival after my work is over. Hearing him both of them perked up especially Miyuki who was imagining the beautiful time she would spend with Tetsuya. Kurumi and Tetsuya were also feeling the same as it would be their first time seeing a festival after coming to this world. After it was approved that the Shiba family would be visiting Kyoto, both Miyuki and Kurumi started packing for their trip to Kyoto. They were very excited as it would be their first time going on a trip and were unable to contain their excitement. While they both were doing the packing Tetsuya was reading some documents and contracts. He had finally decided to build his own restaurant and was reviewing the contracts and other documents before signing it. He had decided to start the work as soon as possible after coming back from Kyoto. Finally the day for their trip to Kyoto came and all three of them, yes three even Karumi was in her human form as she too wanted to enjoy the trip. They waited for the train and when the train arrived they all took their seats. During their journey many guys came and tried to hit on Karumi. Some perverts even tried to hit on Miyuki as well, but were all nearly pissing themselves, as Tetsuya gave all of them a death glare. Seeing him like that both the girls shifted on their seats and leaned over his shoulder. Seeing the girls' action Tetsuya sighed and wrapped his arms around them. When the train arrived at Kyoto they came out and met with the people who came to escort him to the hotel. After reaching the hotel they were given their room keys, and he got one double bedroom just like he had requested. The hotel also had an onsen which they all enjoyed thoroughly, and after enjoying they all crashed onto their beds, as Tetsuya had to go for the meeting the next day. The meeting was very boring, but still Tetsuya remained attentive during the whole meeting. After the meeting was over Tetsuya bid farewell to the others, and arrived at the hotel where he found Miyuki and Karumi already prepared for going new sightseeing. Seeing that how excited both of them were Tetsuya hurriedly went inside the room to change his clothes and came out. They were walking around the city with both Miyuki and Karumi dragging Tetsuya. Seeing both of them like that Tetsuya only gave them a wry smile. The people who saw the three of them even though they were envious of Tetsuya, were still pitying him. While they were enjoying the town suddenly Tetsuya heard someone crying he looked around, but saw that no one was there. He tried to focus to find the direction of the sound. Seeing Tetsuya the girls stopped on their tracks and were trying to notice what Tetsuya was doing. Once Tetsuya found the direction of the sound Tetsuya started following it and the two girls who were still confused but still followed him. After walking some distance Kurumi too heard the voice and now knew what Tetsuya was doing and told about it to Miyuki. They kept on walking and the volume kept on increasing. They reached the source of voice and found a small girl probably four years old with blonde hair and shrine maiden clothes, crying and kept on mumbling Akasan, they approached the girl, and Tetsuya crouched down to her level, and patted her shoulder to get her, attention. The girl who was crying looked up and saw a boy looking at her. Tetsuya looked at the girl with a small smile and asked, what happened? Even though he knew she most probably had lost her mother in the crowd, but still he knew that asking her about it would make her feel a bit relieved. The girl sniffed and said, I cannot find Akasan, and started crying again. Tetsuya took out his handkerchief and wiped her tears. He patted her head and asked in a calm and kind voice, how about we help you find your mother? Hearing this the girl stopped for a while and stared at Tetsuya who was looking at her with a kind expression on his face. Tetsuya who was looking at the girl was thinking, I didn't expect it to meet her this soon. He had already sensed it, and it looked like the two behind him had sensed it too. The girl was none other than the Yaokai Princess Kunu a nine-tailed fox. Kurumi who sensed her was looking at her curiously as it was her first time meeting a nine-tailed fox other than her. Kunu who was still looking at Tetsuya nodded. Seeing her approved Tetsuya stood up and said, I am Tetsuya Shiba nice to meet you and these two are my companions Miyuki and Kurumi. Both Miyuki and Kurumi waved at her. Kunu also wiped her tears and said, My name is Kunu and thank you for helping me Tetsuya Nai Tetsuya, who heard her calling Tetsuya Nai, cutely patted her head unconsciously, and Kunu too who was being patted was in a bliss. Tetsuya stopped and asked her how did she got separated from her mother, to which Kunu said that she was walking along with her mother, but she started to walk in a different direction when she smelled something good, and when she noticed she could not find her mother. 
listening to her Titsaya thought for a while, and then picked her up and put her on his shoulders and said, We will walk around here, and if you find your mother just tell us okay and oh I put you on my shoulders because there was a possibility that you could get lost again, if you smelled something good again. Kunu who heard him got embarrassed and started hitting his head while pouting. Seeing both of them Miyuki and Karumi laughed and Miyuki even took a picture of both of them. While walking around Tetsaya and the other bought various foods and other things. Kunu who was sitting on Tetsaya's shoulders, was eating cotton candy that Tetsaya was holding, while Tetsaya was being fed by both Miyuki and Karumi from time to time. Kunu was enjoying a lot as it was the first time that she interacted with people like this, and not like a princess. Miyuki would take pictures of all of them from time to time. She even took some embarrassing pictures so that she could tease them in future. While they were walking suddenly Kunu gripped Titsaya tighter and said, Titsaya and Aiyaka san there. Titsaya who heard her looked in the direction she was pointing, and saw a beautiful and busty woman with blonde hair, and wearing a yellow kimono, which was trying its best to hide her chest. She was looking very worried and was desperately finding something. Titsaya took Kunu of his shoulders and lightly pushed her forward and said, Go. Hearing him Kunu nodded and ran towards her while shouting Aka-san. When Yusaka heard a voice she was very familiar with she looked in that direction and saw her daughter running towards her. She rushed towards Kunu and hugged her tightly while crying along with Kunu. After they had calmed down Kunu told her what happened. Yusaka looked towards the three of them and came towards them and bowed her head and thanked them. They all waved their hands and said that it was alright. Yusaka looked up and introduced herself, my name is Yusaka and I am Kunu's mother, I thank you very much for helping my daughter. Is there any way in which I can repay the favor? Titsaya said that it was alright, but she kept on insisting. Finally sighing and defeat Titsaya looked at her and said, can you ask someone to guide us around Kyoto as you can see we are just tourists here and don't know the area so well. It would be great help if you can. Listening to his request Yusaka smiled and said, Don't worry I would find someone to guide you tomorrow just tell me your hotel name and phone number. Titsaya nodded and they both exchanged their phone numbers, and Titsaya gave the details which she asked about. After that was over Yusaka invited them for dinner to which Kunu too insisted. After they agreed with her Titsaya was again dragged along the way this time by Kunu, and the other three were laughing on seeing both of them. During the dinner all of them were happily talking to each other, and Miyuki also showed them the pictures that she had taken, and most of them were very embarrassing for Kunu who was now red with embarrassment, but was still holding on as Titsaya was petting her head to make her calm down. Isaka too just like her daughter was happy as she was also enjoying her time like that, and was also happy to see her daughter smile. When they reached back to their hotel Titsaya turned towards Kurumi and asked, So what do you think can you beat H.E.R. Yasaka, as she too is a nine-tailed fox? Kurumi gave him a confident smile and said, Of course I can and besides you are with me as well, and together we can beat anyone. She pulled Titsaya on the bed along with her and Miyuki, and they both snuggled closer to him. Titsaya just sighed and smiled and then said, That's true and drifted off to sleep. The next day Titsaya, Miyuki and Karumi were waiting for the guide who would be escorting them around Kyoto. After a while Titsaya received a message from Yasaka, stating that she had found the guide, and the guide was waiting for them outside the hotel. The three of them stood up and went outside the hotel. As soon as they stepped outside the hotel Titsaya was tackled by white blur, but still Titsaya didn't tell down. Titsaya looked down to see Kunu who was smiling and rubbing her head on his stomach while clinging to him like a cola. Titsaya smiled looking at her and patted her head. Kunu who received the head pit didn't say anything and was enjoying it. Isaka came towards them and said, Good morning to you all, I hope that you all are ready for sightseeing. Yusaka looked at all of them and smiled. They all nodded and smiled as well. Miyuki looked around but saw that no one around them. She then looked towards Yusaka and asked, where is the guide that you talked about? Yusaka was about to answer her, but before that Kunu rose her hand and said, my mother and me will be your guide, no one knows about the places better than her. She said that and puffed her chest feeling proud about it. They all giggled at her actions, and the three of them bowed towards Yusaka and said, then we will be in your care today. Yusaka also bowed towards them and said, yes take care of me as well. While they were doing all this Kunu was pouting and looked away from them. Seeing her actions Titsaya smiled and said, of course we would be counting on Kunu too. 
As he said that Kunu looked at them with a proudful look and said, of course I would be guiding you as well. Kurumi looked at her, her and said, okay we will be in your care too Kunu-chan. While this was happening Miyuki took pictures of Kunu when she was pouting and thought of teasing her later. During the sightseeing many men were glaring daggers at Tetsuya for being surrounded by beautiful women. Some pervs were even eyeing Miyuki and Kunu. Seeing them like that Tetsuya just gave a death glare to all of them, and all those men averted their eyes. Seeing her actions the girls were g-r-a-t-e-f-u-l except Kunu who don't even know what was happening, even Yusaka was grateful. No woman wants to be stared at by Likris gazes, and Yusaka who was used to being stared because of her beauty, was very relieved and felt happy. Miyuki and Karumi tried to get close to Tetsuya and hold his hands. Seeing that both of them were trying to grab Tetsuya's attention, Kunu came and tried to grab his attention and asked Tetsuya to lift her on his shoulders like yesterday. Tetsuya gave Miyuki and Karumi a helpless smile and lifted up Kunu on his shoulders. Even though the girls were pouting and looked away, but knew that Kunu just wanted to enjoy her rare outing with Tetsuya, who was acting like her brother. Both Miyuki and Karumi looked at Kunu with envy. Kunu who noticed them looking at her stuck out her tongue towards them. This made both of them twitch their lips, and both of them came beside Tetsuya and grabbed his arms. Tetsuya who was literally covered by girls, can only give out a tired sigh, and continued their trip like they wanted. Seeing their antics Yusaka chuckled, but also felt a bit envious of them, and Kurumi who was sensitive to people's emotions, looks towards Yusaka with a mischievous expression on seeing which Yusaka immediately averted her eyes. They kept on touring around the town, and just like yesterday kept on eating everything they thought would be delicious. Seeing the amount of food the three of them along with Kunu were eating Yasaka could only sigh. She had decided that she had to ban Kunu from eating snacks for a while. Just like that evening came and Yasaka turned towards the others and said, We have seen all the local attractions here is there anything specific that you want to do? Both Karumi and Miyuki began thinking what to do. Seeing them like that Tetsuya sighed and said, You both really forgot that we came here to attend the festival. Tetsuya looked at the two with a deadpan look, and both of them just laughed awkwardly and awarded their eyes. While they were walking towards the place where the festival would take place they came across a rental yukata store, and the girls insisted on wearing a yukata for the festival. Miyuki, Karumi and Kunu started searching yukatas in the store, leaving Tetsuya alone. Tetsuya sighed and sat alone in the corner of the store, and leaned against the wall and closed his eyes. Tetsuya noticed that someone was coming towards him, but he didn't open his eyes and said, are you not going to change? He opened his eyes and saw that Yusaka was standing in front of her. Yusaka who was standing in front of Tetsuya, shook her head and sat beside him. They both were sitting quietly with their heads resting on the walls. Yusaka broke the silence and said, thank you in a low voice, but Tetsuya still heard her and looked towards her. Yusaka who felt him looking at her looked back at him and smiled. Tetsuya was mesmerized by her smile, but soon compassed himself and asked, Why are you thanking me, it is us who should be thanking you for taking such good care of us. Tetsuya too smiled sincerely at her, and now it was her turn to be mesmerized, but she too compassed herself. Isaka shook her head and said, I am thanking you for helping and spending time with Kunu, she seemed to be sincerely happy when she was with you all I have never seen her smile this much. That poor child doesn't have a father or brother to play with, and I am mostly busy with my work, so I am really grateful for all this. Tetsuya who looked at Yusaka with sympathy said, You don't need to be grateful to us, we as well your company a lot enjoyed, and we can understand her situation well as both me and Miyuki have lost our parents, and you don't need to worry about Kunu just like us she too, have someone to depend on in the form of her mother, and she really like you a lot, so you should not blame yourself too much. Tetsuya said that and unconsciously patted her head. Yusaka who received the head pat was a bit surprised, but didn't reject it and was enjoying it. It has been a long time since somebody was showing her affection, and so she was savoring this feeling. After some time Tetsuya noticed what he was doing and immediately pulled his hand and quickly apologized to her. Yusaka was a bit disappointed when he retraced his hand, but the embarrassed expression on Tetsuya's usually calm and collected face was a great sight to her, and she decided to tease him further. Thinking that she has teased the boy in front of her enough, she calmed herself down and said, I have noticed it for a while, and have been meaning to ask this, but aren't you and Miyuki siblings, so is you having relationship with her alright? 
Did Saya who heard her again got calm and said, even though we treat each other as siblings, we are still non-blood related cousins, so our relationship is okay. She has been living with me after her parents died, and because of this we are very close as we are the only ones left in each other's family, and that closeness caused us to have feelings for each other, but I most certainly don't mind being in relationship with such a cute girl like her. Yusaka smiled and they both started making some small talk until the others came back. When they came back Tetsuya was once again stunned when he saw them in their yukatas. And the girls did their best to show their beauty to Tetsuya. Seeing them like that Yusaka chuckled and took a picture of them. Miyuki wore a sky blue colored yukata which even though was simple, but still complimented her beauty. Harumi wore a blood red colored one, and even though it revealed quite a bit of her chest, it still have her the aura of maturity which made her both beautiful and seductive. Kunu was wearing a pink colored yukata, and she was looking way too cute. Tetsuya came out of his trance and complimented each of the girls, and it made them very happy. They went to the festival after changing into their yukatas, and there too they all started eating. Seeing them like that Yusaka could only sigh but was still enjoying it along with them as well. They also participated in many games, and the vendors were very troubled because of them as they almost won most of the prizes, and the vendors had to beg them to stop. Many bold guys tried to hit on the girls, but one glare from Tetsuya, and they returned back without causing any trouble. While the time for the fireworks was approaching closer Kunu was looking a bit restless. Tetsuya who noticed this looked at her and asked, what happened? Kunu was a bit hesitant to tell him, but the sincere look of worry in his eyes, made her unable to, and she said, I I I need to go to the washroom. The others who heard her had a sweat drop and were thinking why was she so hesitant to tell them. Yusaka sighed and took her to the washroom. After a while the fireworks show started, but there was still no sign of Yusaka or Kunu noticing this both Tetsuya and Karumi got concerned and spread their senses to search for them. Once they found out Tetsuya immediately sent a message to Kurumi to protect Miyuki while he was gone. Kurumi wanted to retort but decided against it, as she could see that Miyuki was enjoying the show, and didn't want it to worry her. Tetsuya went to a corner and teleported to Yasaka's location. There he saw an old storehouse. He could feel many presences inside. He activated his Byakugan to see what was going on inside, but immediately frowned and ran towards the storehouse. He kicked the door open and saw many yaokai in there. All of them looked towards the broken door and saw someone standing there. A random yaokai released his aura to scare the person, but the person didn't flinch. Seeing this he got irritated and said, Oi who the hell are you, how dare you come here do you want to die? The person or more clearly Tetsuya didn't said anything and started walking towards them. See of the yaokai who saw this started to get nervous, but most of them got enraged and started releasing their aura to scare him. Tetsuya saw that the yaokai were trying to intimidate him, but it was all in vain. Tetsuya who started to get impatient thought that he should finish them soon. He released some of his aura and said while raising his hand, Gale style. Laser circus. Numerous beams launched from Tetsuya's hand and started moving towards the yaokai at incredible speed. The yaokai were still shocked and on seeing the human still not intimidated by them, and felt the huge aura coming out of him, were not able to move when the beam was launched towards them. By the time they realized it was already too late as the beam pierced through their chest, killing all of them in process. Confirming that all of them were dead, Tetsuya moved towards the room in which he felt Yusaka's presence. While well, Yusaka took Kunu to the washroom she didn't notice that some people were following her. While Kunu was in the washroom she went towards a tree and sat under it. She placed her hand on her head where Tetsuya had patted her and rubbed it unconsciously. A smile appeared on her face, and she started remembering all the things that she did with Tetsuya during the day. Suddenly she felt that something was about to hit her, and she immediately disappeared from that spot, and the spot where she was sitting now had several knives stuck in the tree. If she hadn't moved she would have injured her shoulder. She narrowed her eyes and said in a cold voice, who dares to attack me come in front of me right now. She more like demanded it. Suddenly she was attacked from every direction, but Yusaka didn't flinch and made a barrier around her. Well well nothing less to be expected from the leader of the Yaokai faction. Suddenly a man with a huge stature appeared and stood in some distance from Yusaka, while looking at her with a smirk on his face. Yusaka who recognized the man had an enraged expression on her face, she started to release her aura and asked in a cold and angry tone, 
What are you doing here, and how dare you attack me? You do know that attacking me would lead you to serious consequences, right? The man who was most probably a yaokai started laughing maniacally. Yusaka who was trying to figure out why he was doing it but the man stopped laughing and answered her queries. The man looked at Yusaka with an excited expression and said, There will be no consequences because as of today, I would be the leader of the faction after I kill you. Yusaka who heard this again narrowed her eyes and said, You should stop daydreaming you know better than anyone else that you cannot defeat me, and because of that attitude of yours, you were not made the leader. The man got enraged and gave Yusaka a hateful glare and said, Those damn geezers think that you were a better choice than me huh, I will deal with them once I am done with you. Yusaka didn't said anything and stared attacking him with her senjutsu. The man also didn't stood still and stared his own attacks towards her. After a couple of minutes of fighting the man was on the ground, and Yusaka looked at him coldly and said, Surrender now and I can guarantee that you will not be killed. The man when heard this snorted and said, still acting mighty as always huh let's see what you can do now. The man made a bright flash and blinded Yusaka's vision. Yusaka who was expecting an attack immediately made a barrier around her, but she didn't felt that any attack hit her barrier. She opened her eyes and saw that she was surrounded by many yaokai who were ready to attack her anytime. She also noticed that the man had also disappeared from his place. Yusaka was about to attack the yaokai, but stopped when she heard the man's voice. I don't think that it is a good idea to attack us, at least look behind first. Yusaka turned around with an angry expression on her face, but her face immediately turned into one with worry. Not so high and mighty now eh? The man standing behind her was the same man she was fighting a bit ago, and he had captured Kunu and was pointing a blade on Kunu's neck. Kunu's mouth was already gagged, and she was also tied up with restraining chains. Seeing her daughter like that Yusaka stopped and said, Leave my daughter out of this, she has nothing to do with your goal. Yusaka was very angry, but calmed herself down for the sake of her daughter. The man looked at Yusaka with amusement and said, How is she not involved with my goal, isn't she the princess of Yaokai? This means that eliminating her is also very important for my goal. Hearing this Yusaka again tried to attack him, but the man said, Don't try to do something stupid, you don't want any bloodshed do you? He moved the blade closer to Kunu neck, and some blood came out. Yusaka immediately stopped and said, I will do anything you want just leave my daughter alone. Kunu who heard this wanted to refute her but was not able to speak anything. HOO you will do anything I say, is that right? The man turned towards one of his subordinates and gestured him something. The subordinate nodded and moved towards Yusaka and bound her with restraining chains. Now you would not be able to do anything unnecessary. He looked towards his subordinates and said, Men carry take her to the headquarter, we still require her to be used as the bargaining chip against those geezers. Like that they reached the old storehouse, and Yusaka and Kunu were thrown in the room which the man entered. Kunu kept on crying and was trying to say something but was unable to. She kept on praying for someone to help her and her mother, and thought of Titsaya. Yasak was worried about Kunu and was thinking of ways to free her out of this situation, but nothing came to her mind. The man had sent some of his subordinates to inform the Yaokai faction about the situation and his demands, and was now waiting for them to respond. The man took a seat on a chair and started waiting. After a while the man got bored and looked towards Yusaka and Kunu. He looked at them for a while, and then a maniac-like expression appeared on his face. The man stood up and walked towards the mother and daughter. When he approached them he raised both of their chins with his fingers and said, You know what you don't look bad, I guess we can have a little fun before the people of the faction arrives. Hearing him Yasaka got panicked and said, You can do anything you want to me, but please don't touch my daughter, she is just a kid. Yasaka said with tears flowing from her eyes. Kunu didn't know what was happening, but when she saw her mother crying she knew that whatever the man meant by fun was not good for them at all. The man laughed like a sinister and threw Kunu away. When Yusaka saw the man coming closer to him she knew that she was about to be ravaged. She closed her eyes and silently crying, so as to not make Kunu even more worried. She too was praying for someone to help her as she was very scared. Just as the man was about to tear Yusaka's kimono someone kicked open the door. All of them looked towards the door and saw someone standing there. When the dust cleared Yusaka and Kunu widened their eyes when they saw who was standing there. It was none other than the person they were hoping for. 
Tetsuya after killing all the yaokai in the room, Tetsuya went towards the room from where he felt Yusaka's and Kunu's presence. He got closer to the door and kicked it open. When the dust cleared Tetsuya saw what was happening in the room and got enraged. He saw both Yusaka and Kunu tied up and were restrained by some sort of chains. But the thing which made him enraged was that the man in front of him was about to rape Yusaka. Tetsuya looked at the man coldly and had decided that he would not give an easy death, like the one he gave to other yaokai, to him. The man who was about to rape Yusaka was shocked when the door was broken and a man came, but he was confident that he could defeat him as he was just a human, but when he noticed the cold glare that Tetsuya gave him, he shuddered and began sweating. Even though he was a bit more serious than before, but he still believed that he could beat Tetsuya. He looked at Tetsuya with anger and asked, who the hell are you bastard, how dare you ruin my fun time with this bitch. And just like that he kept on spouting nonsense and bad mouthing Yasaka. Tetsuya who was getting more and more angry kept walking towards him. Seeing that Tetsuya was not going to answer him the man started to release his aura. Feeling the pitiful amount of aura that the man was releasing to intimidate him, Tetsuya stopped on his tracks, looked down, and started to think of a way to give him the worst death possible, but to the others, it seemed that Tetsuya was scared. Seeing him stop Kunu and Yusaka started shedding tears as they were feeling bad for involving Tetsuya in this mess. The man who saw that Tetsuya stop thought that he got scared. The man had a smirk on his face, but it immediately turned into a frown by the next action that Tetsuya did. Tetsuya who now had thought of a plan, couldn't help but give a sinister smirk. Seeing his smirk the man got enraged and said, you dare to laugh at me the great me the man shouted and launched an attack towards Tetsuya. Seeing the man attack Tetsuya Kunu and Yusaka, closed their eyes as they didn't want to see him die. Suddenly a loud shriek was heard by them, but the voice didn't belong to Tetsuya. They both looked towards them and saw that Tetsuya was holding the man's fist and was crushing it while looking down, and the man was on his knees and was trying to endure the pain. Tetsuya then looked up and directly looked in the man's eyes with his rinnegan activated. The man and the other two were surprised at this development. The man who was being stared at by those eyes thought that those eyes could see through his soul. Tetsuya who was crushing his hand, released him and opened his palm aiming at him and said, Shinra Tensei, and the man was thrown towards the wall with a great force. Tetsuya walked towards Kunu and brought her close to Yasaka. He looked at both of them with a reassuring smile and said, wait for a bit I will free you after killing this shit soon. He stood up and walked towards the man, while both Kunu and Yasaka kept on looking at his back. The man who was smashed in the wall stood up and was now completely serious. He looked towards Tetsuya with a hateful expression and said, I will kill you, and used his senjutsu to attack him. Tetsuya once again pointed his palm in the attack's direction and absorbed them. The man was stupefied by this act and was now thinking of a way to get out of this situation, but his thought was cut off by Tetsuya who said, you cannot get out of this situation. Tetsuya who heard his thoughts with his telepathy thought of scaring him a bit. The man when heard Tetsuya's word had become pale. He understood that Tetsuya could hear his thoughts as well. Tetsuya smiled at him, but this smile gave him deep chills. As if the man had some doubts about Tetsuya's mind reading were cleared when Tetsuya said, yeah I can hear. The man knew that he was in deep shit now. Tetsuya again gave him a glare, but this time he also released his killing intent as well. The man who was experiencing all this was now literally pissing his pants. Tetsuya absorbed all the chakra present in his body with his rinnegan and started smashing him to the ground or wall by his telekinesis, but stopped after a while, the man's face was now unrecognizable. The man was lying on the floor with all his bones broken and his body covered in blood. Tetsuya walked to the man and grabbed his head by his hair and looked directly in his eyes, but this time activating his EMS and used Tsukiyomi on him. Even though it was Tsukiyomi but it was Tetsuya's Tsukiyomi, and there is only one thing that could be said about his Tsukiyomi it was a man's greatest nightmare. Tetsuya can use the normal Tsukiyomi as well, but he has also created his Ao special torture Tsukiyomi as well. Inside the man's mind he could see and feel the, the pain of his getting chopped off, and his body pierced with swords for three days, but outside only ten seconds have passed. The man got back his consciousness was breathing very heavily and looked towards Tetsuya with fear in his eyes. Tetsuya looked at the man for a while and thought that it was enough for him. 
He stood up and started walking away much to the relief of the injured man. But before he could celebrate Tetsuya again looked back at him and said, Amaterasu the man was engulfed in black flames and was crying and shouting in pain. Tetsuya went towards Yusaka and Kunu and freed them and was immediately hugged by the both of them. Both Yusaka and Kunu started crying in his embrace, but he didn't said anything and let them cry to their heart's content. After a while they had stopped crying, and Tetsuya looked down and saw both of them sleeping in his embrace. He gave a tired sigh and gave a telepathic message to Kurumi telling her about the situation, and also told them to come back to the hotel soon, as he was going to take them back there, as he didn't know where they lived. Tetsuya used his time a l t e r a t i o n psyche skill, and fixed their clothes and appearance, and teleported back to his room. The next morning when Yusaka woke up she felt that someone was clutching her hand tightly. She turned her head and saw the one who was clutching her was none other than her daughter Kunu. When she saw Kunu, everything that happened yesterday came back to her, and she hugged Kunu tightly. A few minutes later she thought that it wasn't her room and started looking around. She looked at her other side and saw Miyuki was sleeping beside her. Her gaze again shifted and landed on Tetsuya who was sleeping on a chair. She remembered how he protected her and Kunu, and couldn't help but blush thinking about his fight. She looked at him affectionately but was brought out of her thoughts by a voice. So you fell for him as well huh? When Yusaka turned her head she saw Kurumi looking at her with a mischievous expression and a smug on her face. Yusaka's blush deepened, but she didn't deny her statement. Soon the others started waking up. When Tetsuya woke up he was immediately tackled by Kunu in a hug, and she started crying again. Seeing her cry Tetsuya only consoled her, and after a while she stopped crying, but still didn't leave Tetsuya. Tetsuya didn't have any problems with that and looked towards Yusaka. Yusaka who had calmed herself down, looked at Tetsuya with seriousness and asked, Who are you, know what are you, and what is your purpose of coming to Kyoto? She looked at Tetsuya with a cold gaze so as to intimidate him, but Tetsuya remained calm and said, I am a human, and we came here on a trip, though I had a meeting on the first day. Yusaka who didn't found any lie in his words, sighed and said, I know this is late, but thank you for saving me and my daughter yesterday, if you didn't come who knows what could have happened. She said the last part with a bit of fear in her voice. Tetsuya who heard her shook his head and said, okay I will go out you guys should change, and we will go and have some breakfast after that. Tetsuya stood up, freed himself out of Kunu's grasp much to her disappointment, and left the room. Everyone looked at him go out and close the door. Once the door was closed, Miyuki got up and took out some clothes from her ring and gave them to Yusaka and Kunu, Yusaka got Kurumi's clothes and Kunu got Miyuki's clothes, though it were a bit big for her. Yusaka looked at the clothes which she and Kunu got and changed its eyes with her magic. While they were changing Kunu suddenly said, Mom when I will grow up I will marry Tetsuya and I and smiled. Listening to her Miyuki suddenly stopped changing and looked towards Kunu and said in a calm yet in an angry tone, Sorry Kunu you can't because I will be marrying Ani-sama in future. When Kunu heard this she looked towards Miyuki fiercely and said, No he will be my mate. Soon they both started lashing out at each other. Kurumi looked at the scene with amusement, but Yusaka was very troubled on seeing them. She too wanted to show her feelings, but was feeling complicated as she was already married and was thinking whether Tetsuya would accept her or not. Kurumi who felt the change in her emotions put her hand in Yusaka's shoulders and gave a reassuring smile and said, Don't worry just stay true to yourself, even I am his mistress. Hearing Kurumi reassuring her she felt a bit happy, but was also annoyed as she too was in a relationship with Tetsuya. Isaka sighed and left the room in which Kurumi has also started arguing with them, as Kunu heard that Kurumi also wanted to be with Tetsuya. Once she closed the door she found Tetsuya leaning against the wall. On noticing her Tetsuya stood straight and walked towards her. When he reached there she looked towards Yusaka and asked, so where are the others? Even though Tetsuya already knew what was happening inside with the help of his telepathy he still asked her. Yusaka looked at him and said, they are inside the room fighting about who will be your wife in future, aren't you very popular with girls? Yusaka who was depressed, thought of lightening her mood by teasing Tetsuya. Tetsuya only sighed and said, you don't need to hide you fear you know. Yusaka's who heard him frown but regained he normal expression soon and asked, what are you talking about? Tetsuya still looked at her and said, you can drop the act one no you are scared by yesterday's events, 
I won't blame you though that you want to show that you are strong in front of Kunu, but remember you two have feelings, so show them, even Kunu wouldn't want to see you sad. He moved closer to her, patted her head and gave her a gentle smile. Isaka who heard what Tetsuya said couldn't help and hugged him and started crying in his embrace. Tetsuya just sighed and continued to caress her head, he thought that Yusaka was very strong woman to keep all those feelings buried inside her, and still act normal. Once Yusaka calmed down Tetsuya looked at her and tried very hard to hold his laughter. Isaka's face was completely puffed, and all the crying and snot made her look very funny. Yusaka who saw Tetsuya trying to hold back his laugh after looking at her face, got embarrassed and started hitting him lightly, and buried her head in his chest. Tetsuya apologized and wiped her face with his handkerchief. Just as he was about to leave her embrace Yusaka hugged him tightly and said, can we stay like this for a bit? Tetsuya sighed and he nodded and patted her head. He knew that he would be scolded by Miyuki, but still he didn't left Yusaka alone as he knew that she didn't have anyone to depend upon. Isaka had many responsibilities, to take care of her daughter, and her faction alone without depending on anyone was a very difficult job, but she still tried her very best to do all that, but even then, everyone needs someone to rely upon, and Yusaka felt that she could rely on him. Yusaka had now completely calmed down, and was now back to her cheerful and playful self. She looked at him and said, you know well they are arguing amongst themselves, why not I take you for myself? Just as she said that the door burst open and a unified, no, was heard. Miyuki and Kunu started to argue with Yusaka, but she was very calm. Kurumi stepped closer to Tetsuya and said, so you noticed it too huh? Tetsuya turned towards her and said, yeah yesterday when I reached there I saw her face full of fear, and I know that she could not overcome her fear, it would have consumed her if she hadn't released all that of her chest. Kurumi who heard him only smiled and thought that she was correct on choosing him as her partner. She walked closer to him grabbed his face and gave him a deep kiss. The others stopped arguing and looked towards the both of them with widened eyes. Kurumi released him from the kiss and said, Miyuki sorry I have changed my mind now I too will now aim to be his wife. She said that with smug on her face and enclosed Tetsuya in a hug. The others who came out of the shock jumped on them while saying things like they would not let it happen and all that. Meanwhile Tetsuya about whom all this was going on about is choked by four girls and was trying very hard to hold on to his dear life. Tetsuya somehow escaped the four of them and went to eat breakfast alone. After he was done eating he went back to his room to find the girls talking and laughing together. He sighed in relief as they had stopped bickering with each other, and were being friendly. After a while Yasaka asked Tetsuya and the others whether they wanted to see the Yaokai territory to which they all agreed. When they reached the Yaokai territory many Yaokai guards were very of them, and some even pointed their weapons at them, only to receive a cold glare from Tetsuya which shut them up. Yasaka assured everyone that they were not suspicious and were her guests. When they reached Yusaka's quarters they saw many yaokai there probably worried about their leader because of yesterday's events. Yusaka and Kunu took their time to assure everyone that they were fine. Yusaka then took them to a big hall where many old yaokai were present. They started to discuss about the incident that occurred yesterday, and once the discussion was over all the elders bowed and showed their gratitude towards Tetsuya. Tetsuya also asked them to keep his and his friend's identity a secret, as he didn't want it to involve them in some trouble. They all accepted his request and promised to not tell anyone about them. After the meeting was over Yusaka took her leave and went to do some faction-related work, and Kunu took the other three and gave them a tour around the faction headquarters. They were surprised to see so many types Yaokai and even Tetsuya's stoic face turned into that of pleasure, while he rubbed the tails or ears of some Yaokai who agreed to his request. Seeing him like that and she too turned into her Yaokai form, so that Tetsuya would pet her too. Seeing her act spoiled Tetsuya chuckled, but still did as she wanted, and when he started rubbing both of them had a blissful expression on their face. Seeing them both Miyuki and Karumi felt envious as both of them couldn't grow tails and ears like that of Yaokai as Miyuki was just a human, and Karumi could only chain between a human or a tailed beast, but not a Yaokai. This made her irritated as she too was a nine-tailed fox, but their conditions were very different. From that day onwards Tetsuya and the others know that even he could not maintain his calm in front of animal-eared cute girls. After the tour Tetsuya and the others went with Kunu to their living quarters. 
they decided to take a bath, and Tetsuya was excited about it as it was an onsen, and he really liked to take a dip in onsen. He entered the bath, cleaned his body and then went in the onsen and started to relax, but soon he heard the door of the bath opened. He turned around and saw Yusaka and the others there. Seeing them Tetsuya got flustered and started to take his leave, only to be stopped by Kurumi and Yusaka, who grabbed his hands and put them in between their breasts, and pulled him in the bath, along with the Tetsuya looked at both of them, and they looked back at him with a smile on their face. Yusaka hugged his arm tighter and said, You have just entered the bath you should stay here a bit longer, we don't mind you being here. Tetsuya looked at everyone present there and sighed in defeat, no one there was bothered by his presence, so he too decided to not think too much about it. He closed his eyes, took a comfortable position, and then started to relax. Seeing that he was not in the least bothered by their presence, Yusaka got a bit annoyed. The others didn't had any problems with it, as Miyuki and Karumi are used to taking baths with him and Kunu just like a child that she was didn't knew anything. But then Yusaka got an idea and she went out of water and sat on a nearby stool and transformed into her yaokai form and said, Tetsuya would you help me in washing my tails? Tetsuya who heard her immediately opened his eyes and looked at her. He saw nine beautiful golden tails swinging to and fro attracting him more and more. Seeing Yusaka using Tetsuya's weakness Kurumi and Miyuki couldn't help but look at her with jealousy. Yusaka had heard from her subordinates about how Tetsuya was interested in Yaokai's fluffy ears and tails. For the first time in her life she was very glad that she took good care of her fur. Tetsuya who approached Yusaka caressed her tails and thought that they were very soft. He started rubbing his cheeks slowly with her tails enjoying the pleasant sensation that they caused. Yusaka whose tails were caressed by Tetsuya, was blushing and was also feeling very hot, because her tails were also very sensitive spot for her, and every time Tetsuya caressed her tail, she would experience a jolt pass through her body, and finally unable to bear the sensation she turned around and gave a deep kiss to him and then buried his face in his breasts. Every time Tetsuya tried to speak something she felt vibrations flow through her breast which made her more excited. Seeing what they were doing Miyuki immediately covered Kunu's eyes. Kurumi was enjoying the show in front of her, but decided to step in, or it would take a wrong turn. Kurumi approached both of them and pulled Yusaka away from him. Yusaka tried to get free from Kurumi's grasp but was unable to. Finally realization hit her, and she got bright red because of embarrassment. She immediately started running towards the door and left the hot spring as soon as possible, though to Tetsuya, it seemed very cute to him. During the dinner Tetsuya sat beside Yusaka who was still feeling embarrassed. Tetsuya looked at her and sighed. He kept his hand on hers and said, You should not feel embarrassed about it, I am not mad at you rather I am very happy that a beautiful woman such as you accepted me. He gave a gentle smile to her before saying, So thank you. But still know that I am still a minor, so you have to wait a few more years before we can have fun, he winked at her at the end of his sentence. Yusaka was taken aback by the wink, and her blush grew to a darker shade of red, and she looked away. After that they continued to eat without talking to anyone. At night everyone was sleeping peacefully except Tetsuya, who was covered by four girls sleeping in very odd positions. The next morning Tetsuya woke up and looked at all of them with a blaming gaze, as she was also one of those people who didn't let him sleep peacefully. Tetsuya and the others were standing at the train station. Kunu was clinging to him like cola, and was giving him puppy eyes to stay there with her, but Tetsuya stood her resolve and said, I have to go back for now Kunu, but it is not like that we cannot meet in future. I will come and visit you from time to time, and you could also come at my place to spend your time there. He gave them a smile dot a and d then a small bracelet, and a ring appeared in his hands. He gave the ring to Yusaka and the bracelet to Kunu. Both of them were just like the ring he gave to Miyuki, and he explained them how to use it. Both of them were very happy that Tetsuya cared for them, and would come to their aid whenever they would be in trouble. Yasaka asked Tetsuya to put the ring on her hand, and Kunu did the same. Suddenly Yasaka grabbed Tetsuya's shoulder and bit his neck. She gave him a mark in his neck, and then licked it seductively and said, Now I have marked you as my mate, you have to take responsibility. Yusaka looked at the other three with a triumphant look which said, I am ahead of you now. They were about to lash out at each other, but then the train arrived. Tetsuya sighed in relief and thought, thank god they didn't start fighting here. Who knows what all could they have caused. 
The girls bid farewell to them and entered the train leaving Tetsuya and the Mothen daughter behind. Kunu was very sad on seeing him leave. She also wanted to mark him as his mate, but she was still too young and was not allowed to mark others as mates. Tetsuya saw this came closer to her and did the legendary Itachi Ichiha forehead poke and said, maybe next time and entered the train. Kunu was holding her forehead with a smile on her face, and seeing her daughter's happy expression, Yasaka couldn't help but smile as well. After returning back from Kyoto Tetsuya and the other had once again started their training, and Tetsuya had also started to pace up and open his restaurant. He still had some funds left, but he didn't want to take any risks. Tetsuya had also started to increase Miyuki's training once again, as he didn't want to see her to be in the same situation which Yusaka and Kunu just encountered. It was true that he would save her as well, but what he would do if she could not contact him or he could not reach her during an emergency. Miyuki was struggling to keep up with his training, but after learning about his reason to train her this much from Kurumi, she didn't give up and tried her best to keep up with him. Tetsuya had also promised her that he would make her a special weapon if she could land a hit on him during the spars. Tetsuya also went on dates with both Miyuki and Kurumi from time to time as a reward for them to keep up with his training, so they didn't complain a bit as they thought that the reward was worth the hard work they did. Miyuki was also able to land a hit on Tetsuya after a month of training, and just like Tetsuya promised, he gave her a bluish-green sword, which looked to be made if I see basically Yu-Gi-Oh's sword from Sao, but slightly greenish color. The sword was able to manipulate ice and wind without any problem, and it could also change its eyes. The sword's powers also grew along with her. Seeing Miyuki's progress Tetsuya was very satisfied she had already reached the high high class level, and with her new sword, she could also take on some of the low ultimate class beings. Tetsuya also taught Miyuki how to fly with the help of Kai. Though she had troubles in learning Kai manipulation, but was finally able to get it though her Kai attacks are not very powerful, so she only uses it for flight. After months of hard work he was finally able to open his restaurant, he had decided that he would be the cook, and he would ask Kurumi to be her waitress. During the first week of restaurant there were not many customers, so it was easily manageable for them, but after tasting his food more and more people started coming there, and the workload on them increased. Kurumi didn't have any problem as she just needed to serve the food and take the orders, and had the stamina as a tailed beast to do so, but for Tetsuya, it was a different story. He was rushed with orders to the point he used shadow clones for helping him cook and buying the ingredients which were depleted at a very fast rate. Seeing his progress many nearby restaurants tried to cause ruckus in his restaurant, but Tetsuya who heard their ulterior motives used his powers, changed their memories a bit such that they would just sit and enjoy the food and would leave them a lot of tip. Tetsuya and the other two also noticed that many supernatural beings would come to dine at his place as well but most of them were either low class or mid class, so they were no threat to them. Tetsuya even invited Kunu and Yusaka to his restaurant, and they both were surprised to see the rush in the restaurant, but once they tasted his food, they realized the reason for the rush. Tetsuya had also started writing novels and drawing manga, which were famous in his previous world. He had started publishing Harry Potter for the novel and One Piece for the manga. When he went to the publishing company the people there just felt that the child was just playing around, but after reading his work, those same people were on their knees in front of him requesting him to publish his work there. Tetsuya who got aware of the situation, started leeching out as much as he could. The higher-ups of the company were happy that he decided to publish his work there, but still the contract that they made with him was too much for a new writer, and they felt that they have been cheated, but once his work was published, the hype that it created made those people forget about that, and were now happy that they accepted his offer. He kept his identity a secret as he didn't want any more trouble than he was already experiencing, and used the pen name Satama. He used this name because he thought that people at the publishing office calling him Satama Sensei like Gino's would be funny. Right now Tetsuya came out of his house and is now going to his restaurant beside his house. Tetsuya had already employed some of his clones there before he went to his house for some rest, and now he was going back to work. Tetsuya looked towards his restaurant and saw that it was crowded just like always. Suddenly Tetsuya noticed two people outside his restaurant. One was wearing a magical girl outfit, and the other was wearing a maid outfit. To a normal person they would look like some cosplayers, but on seeing them Tetsuya frowned a bit. 
The people were none other than Sir Fall Leviathan, a devil king, and Grafia Lucifage, the strongest queen. At first it Saya thought that they came to investigate about him and the others, but sighed when read their minds with telepathy. They were not here for investigation. It looked like Sir Fall and Grafia met at a comic that they came to visit. Surfol came by herself to find some material on magical girls, and Grafia came to accompany Rias, and after meeting each other, they both decided to catch up with each other. Rias did not join them and left back for Underworld. Tetsaya thought for a while and then decided to talk with them. He was also interested to meet with both of them as he had seen them in the Anaim before. He also wanted to take a picture along with Surfol, as he had also seen the magical girl in Aime, along with Miyuki who was also a fan, and he too thought that it was quite good. He was not flustered anymore, as now he knew that they were not here to investigate on him, and even if the things were to go south, he could easily vaporize them without much difficulty. He approached them and saw both of them talking to each other, while standing in a line to enter his restaurant. He grabbed Surfol's dress with his fingers and lightly tugged it, when Surfall noticed that someone was tugging her dress she turned around to see who was calling her. When she turned around and saw a cute young boy standing behind her. Grafia also followed her gaze to see who was calling her. Tetsaya who saw Surfall's face from a close distance, thought that she was very beautiful but still remained calm. He gave her a gentle smile and asked, are you doing a magical girl milky cosplay? Surfol when heard the boy's question became excited and said, yes I am the magical girl Levi Tan, and did the pose that she did in an I'm. Tetsaya thought that she looked cute but still remained calm and said, I am a fan too, can I have a picture with you? Surfol heard him and started fiercely nodding her head and said, yes you can. Seeing her nod like that Tetsaya started to laugh lightly, but seeing him laugh all the GIRLS including Surfall and Grafia, that were looking at the interaction between him and Surfall, only had one thought, cute Surfall immediately hugged him and started rubbing his cheeks with hers and said, so cute. Tetsaya didn't mind her as he too felt nice and let her do what wanted. Surfall calmed herself down and looked towards Grafia, who had also calmed herself after seeing his cuteness and said, Thea-chan will you take our picture? Seeing Grafia nod in agreement Tetsaya gave his phone to her and said, thank you. Grafia nodded and took the picture of both of them, and gave the phone back to him. Tetsaya took the phone and said, thank you my name is Tetsaya Shiba, nice to meet you. Surfall and Grafia nodded and then Surfall said, nice to meet you as well Tetsaya Chan my name is Surfall Leviathan, but you can call me Sarah Chan or Levi Tan, and the one beside me is Grafia bowed and said, nice to meet you my name is Grafia Lucifage. She bowed again and this time Tetsaya also bowed. He then looked at her curiously and asked, Why are you wearing a maid uniform are you also cosplaying? Hearing this Surfall started to laugh and said, I told you to wear something else. Grafia ignored her and said, No, this is my work attire. Tetsaya didn't ask her further about the maid clothes, as he thought that she liked that as she even wore it in public places as well. They all started to talk to each other while waiting in the line. Mostly it was Tetsaya and Surfall discussing about the Anaim. Grafia was actually not very bothered by that, she even felt a bit gratiful as she didn't have to face the hyperactive girl who came along with her. When their turn came Surfall looked at Tetsaya and said, Tetsaya-chan come and eat with us it would be more fun, you don't mind Grafia do you? Surfall looked at Grafia for confirmation to which she gave a nod of approval. She had a good impression of Tetsaya, and thought that he was better behaved than a certain red-headed attacku girl. Seeing Grafia approving her request Surfal was very happy. She thought that Tetsaya was very cut just like Sona, and also didn't act it cold towards her, and he also showed interest in magical girls, she was very happy to finally meet someone with whom she could freely talk about her hobby. She was about to ask Tetsaya again, but when she looked back Tetsaya was gone. They both searched for him but couldn't find him. Surfol was very sad, but Grafia comforted her, and said that he might have gone back to his friends or parents. Surfol could only sigh, and then both of them ordered their food. While they were talking to each other someone put the dishes they ordered on the table. Both of them were mesmerized by the aroma that came out of the dish, but came back from their thoughts when they heard a familiar voice, I hope you enjoy the food I worked extra hard preparing it for you, and I also added a dessert. They both looked towards the source of the voice, and saw Tetsaya standing there in chef's attire and smiling at them. He bowed to them and then left them. 
He also used to serve food to the customers while Kurumi was on break, and he was also well known among the regulars. Surfol came out of her shock and said, Wait Tetsaya-chan you work in this restaurant. Tetsaya looked back at them and just smiled and then went back to the kitchen. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.